Great Tuesday, everyone. This is Pastor Charles from Bucksmont Baptist Church, and this is our Testimony Tuesday uh, vlog, our Testimony Tuesday video series. I want to be posting a uh, testimony um, every Tuesday where we talk about somebody's faith, um, why do they love Jesus, how do they come to know Jesus, and or what things uh, related to the Bible um, uh, influence them or help them to believe the Bible was true. So the first person we have for Testimony Tuesday is me. So I wanted to uh, just briefly share with you uh, my testimony and why I trust the Bible as the Word of God. Obviously, I'm not going to get into great detail about it. just want to hit some main points on both of these. Uh, otherwise, we'd have a multiple hour uh, Testimony Tuesday. So I want to keep these short to be an encouragement um, to, to you and, and to help people wrestle with these questions. So for me, um, and my testimony was I was a delinquent uh, teenager, a delinquent young man, um, a lot of sin, uh, a lot of issues, uh, pretty much uh, my mentality was that uh, if something brought me pleasure or gain, then I would pursue that. Um, when I was uh, uh, 21, 20 years old, I ended up getting a job in outside sales. And the reason why I wanted to get a job in outside sales is because I wanted to make a lot of money. And at that point in my time, at that point in my life, I had decided that I didn't need to go to college. I said, you know what? I don't need to go to college to get an education. Uh, I can make money and be successful without going to school. So I decided to get a job in outside sales. When I was in outside sales, one of the top salesmen in the entire country, uh, Rich Kaiser, a, uh, a great guy, a friend to this day, um, he offered to mentor me. Uh, you know, being a, a, a slick kid uh, from New Jersey, I wasn't sure if Rich had ulterior motives, but I knew that his help uh, could, could help me be successful. His guidance or, or watching him or learning from him could help me be successful in the business. So I took Rich up on his offer. Uh, Rich and I developed a friendship. Uh, he, he mentored me, he helped me out a lot. He helped me be successful in the industry. And uh, a couple months after working there, Rich asked me if I was a Christian. I said, yeah, Rich, I'm a Christian, you know, and I thought I was because when I grew up, uh, I wasn't Jewish. I wasn't Muslim. We attended church occasionally. So, you know, but as far as I knew, I was a Christian. I wasn't one of these other things. And uh, Rich took me at my word. Uh, he continued to be my friend, continued to, to mentor me and, and help me out. But what's funny is that I used to uh, come back to the office on Mondays telling uh, rich about my excursions to different bars and clubs in Atlantic City and, and things like that. And so uh, I'm sure he he knew that I wasn't living for Jesus. And so, uh, but Rich continued to be my friend. Uh, after working uh, at the uh, uh, outside sales for about nine months or so, a new guy came on to the office. His name uh, was Steve. I don't recall Steve's last name. We're not um, in contact uh, anymore. But Rich found out that Steve had decided to get into business instead of going to seminary. And so that led Rich and Steve into a very robust conversation on uh, the Bible and theology. Uh, Rich and Steve had a probably had two to three hour conversation about the Bible and theology. They were talking about predestination. Uh, free will. They're talking about angels, eschatology, all types of different things. And my friend Rich was quoting the Bible. And I was really surprised by this. So I said to him the next day, I said, hey, Rich, I'm surprised you know so much about the Bible. And he goes to me, hey, Charles, of course I know so much about the Bible. I'm a Christian. And the reason why I live my life the way I do, the reason why I don't lie to my customers, like a lot of these guys, I don't cheat on my wife, like a lot of these guys. The reason why I help you out is because I'm a Christian and the Bible instructs me how to live. And uh, just having so much uh, respect and admiration for Rich um, made me want to start reading the Bible. So, you know, um, over the next several months, a uh, um, long period of time, I, I would read the Bible and I would ask Rich questions, read the Bible, ask him questions. Then one day uh, I was reading Sermon on the Mount in my room uh, and my sin was so clearly revealed to me 
that I, that I, the way I was living was falling short of God and his perfection and God's intention for my life. And so I got down on my knees and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, uh, just overcome by the Holy Spirit. Um, from that point on, uh, God continually refined me and helped me grow uh, closer to him. I ended up going to college uh, and, and, and getting a business degree and and God has continually worked in my life um, all the way up to, to um, leading and creating the opportunity for me to be, become the pastor of uh, Bucksmont Baptist Church um, uh, just a couple months ago. So that's my testimony in short. Um, uh, why do I believe in Christianity, right? There's a lot of different religions out there. There's a lot of different religious books out there. Why do I trust the Bible? It's actually funny is once I became a Christian, I said, let me see if this is real. You know, uh, um, there's a lot of religions out there. Why, why shouldn't I be Muslim? Why shouldn't I be Buddhist? Why shouldn't I, I, I be uh, uh, Jewish? You know, uh, um, the, the Christian Bible, is, you know, the majority of um, books uh, or, or content in the Christian Bible is the, Torah, is, um, the Hebrew Bible. So I looked into these things. And there were a couple of major things that stood out to me that said, you know, this is it, this is the truth. Uh, the Bible is the truth. It's the word of God. And uh, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh who died for our sins. Uh, the first was the uh, self-attesting nature to the scriptures, uh, what the Bible um, uh, claims about itself, that it is the word of God. You know, so, uh, you know, immediately you know, I said, uh, you know, looked at that, the self-attesting nature of scripture and, and um, the, the fulfillment of prophecies in scripture. Um, you know, there, there's hundreds of different fulfilled prophecies in scripture and, um, you know, made me, um, uh, uh, had, gave me some confirmation. But also, you know, there's other writings where there, there appears to be self um, uh, uh um, uh, attestation of it being true and also um, uh, prophecies that come true. So that wasn't where I ended, you know, but that was one of the, the early things uh, that came about. Um, the second piece of it was actually the archaeological evidence. You know, I was uh, pretty big into history at that period of time and, um, you know, wanted to, to validate the events in scripture. So I would I do a lot of research on these different things. And I found out um, uh, through my research that uh, the events that are recorded in the Old Testament and the events that are recorded in the New Testament can be verified by outside things, right? Um, uh, specifically in the Old Testament, we have a lot of archaeological findings that confirm the accuracy and the events of the Old Testament. And um, it, it, as you will see, if you look into this at certain points in time, scholar, archaeological scholars would say, hey, look, you know, King David wasn't a, a real king. You know, there was no there was no kingdom of, of Israel at that point in time. And then as they did further digging and research, um, the, the, the cities and, and King David were verified by archaeological findings. Um, one of the uh, cool things is. Um, you know, I think is uh, Belshazzar in, in Daniel, um, you know, is, is uh, said as the king of Babylon. However, at one point in time, they believed that um, there was, uh, a, that he wasn't a king, that he wasn't in the record. And so they said the Bible's wrong. And then after um, additional archaeological digging and, and finding, they actually found um uh, uh, they discovered things that documented Belshazzar as being the king of Babylon who could have actually appointed Daniel to the position that the Bible said. And so there's a lot of other um, incidences of that. I found a ton of them when I was uh, doing this research. And so I said, wow, the Bible is verified by outside sources and outside things, archaeological uh, diggings and findings. Uh, related to that too, is the um, verification of Christ. Christ won as a person on earth. There's um, other writings, the writings of Josephus, and um, other accounts that verify 
Jesus Christ was not just a, a myth, right? He was a, um, a, a, a person on earth at that period of time. There's tons of writings uh, or, you know, there's tons of things that point to that. Then also the eyewitness account of his uh, life and his death and his resurrection, right? And so you say, oh man, you know, being raised from the dead, that's fake. That's a fairy tale. That's like a lot of these other mythologies. Um, but the eyewitness account of scripture, you know, the um, uh, New Testament being written by people who uh, were disciples of Jesus or uh, direct contact with disciples of Jesus, uh, uh, firsthand accounts uh, from the disciples of Jesus uh, show that, you know, these things were written by real people and they believe this to be true. And the reason why I said they believed it to be true um, is, is, and you could believe an eyewitness account, is that if you read the New Testament, um, it says that the disciples uh, kind of uh, walked away from Christ, right? They, they walked away from Christ um, at uh, the crucifixion. They thought it was over. You know, they thought that Jesus was crucified and dead. Uh, even Peter denied Christ uh, three times before the cross. His main disciple denied him three times before the cross. But then after he was crucified, Peter um, saw the resurrected Jesus and committed his life to him to the point of being killed himself, being martyred or killed himself. So one of the things about um, uh, verifying a, an event to be true is eyewitness account. And then another thing to verify a, an event to be true is what, um, what type of um, motive does somebody have to be dishonest, right, or to lie? So for example, if there was great gain in lying about Jesus, being resurrected, you can say, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe Peter and all of them made that up because they were getting great gain. The disciples were getting great gain, but actually they were persecuted. Uh, they were thrown in jail. They were beaten and they were ultimately killed. Um, church history says that all the disciples were killed except for John. So they actually gave their lives up to proclaim a resurrected Jesus. They gave their lives up, lives up for that. So if it was a lie, if Jesus was not resurrected and did not appear to them after the resurrection, why would they lie? They would just say, hey, look, you know what? Jesus is not alive. He's dead. Um, let me please go on my way. Please don't persecute me. Please don't kill me. Um, uh, don't, don't crucify me. Uh, um, you know, I, I should have never said that. And they would have been let go and they would have been free. So they actually had more gain to say Jesus was not resurrected than, and they had no gain to say that he was resurrected because they paid for it with their life. So they clearly believed that Jesus Christ was crucified and rose from the dead, that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. And so, you know, that's powerful to me, um, uh, this eyewitness testimony and people sacrificially giving their life to proclaim the truth of the gospel. Um, the final thing that really makes me um, trust and believe in scripture um, is just its preservation. <clears throat> it's preservation throughout time. Right. There's no other book in, antiqu in antiquity that has been preserved like the Bible, the number of manuscripts, the accuracy of manuscripts, um, uh, just throughout time related to the Old Testament and the New Testament, and then also the dates, um, just just um, how um, how perfect the transcription has been. It's not exactly perfect. Obviously, uh, scribes writing things can sometimes write one letter or the other or, or make a mistake here or there, but by and large, the um, preservation of scripture throughout time um, was evidence to me that the book is special. The Bible's special. There's no other book like it in human history, and it's the Word of God. So that's my testimony. That's the reasons uh, why I believe the Bible is true, the scripture is true, 
And uh, so this is Testimony Tuesday. We're going to uh, be doing these uh, with different folks. And if you have any questions, uh, please, uh, you know, send me an email, message us, make a comment, and I'd be happy to expand um, or expound on different things uh, or points um, if, if folks desire that. So uh, Testimony Tuesday, episode one.